So here we are at Zibal Chautan in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. How you doing megalithomaniacs? Welcome to Zibal Chautan. This is an incredible Mayan site. It goes back to the pre-classic era though, which is one of the reasons I really wanted to come here. So officially this site really began around 2000 years ago onwards. It's known as a pre-classic site, but there's good evidence they found dating here on a stele which we saw in the museum which goes back to 583 I think BC. Also one of the early explorers here, one of the early archaeologists believes he found dates going back to 2000 BC so this is older than the Olmecs and I think this site is like one of the origin sites of the Yucatan that influenced the Maya throughout this area. They, there are known connections with places such as Chichen Itza, possibly Teotihuacan, and therefore possibly connections with the Olmecs as they spread out through the country. Here we have one of the many temples and stelae, which are now most of the carvings have come off them along the main path, and that goes all the way down there to the Temple of the Seven Dolls and this Sac Bay, which goes on for at least half a mile. I think it goes on for a bit further actually meets up with these temples, which are on the western end of the site. So we're going to walk down to the western part first, because there's less people down here. And then we'll go back up to the uh, Temple of the Seven Dolls, because to me, that is the most important part of this site. And you can see pyramid constructions here. You can see how wide this sack bay is. It's what, 40, 50 feet wide. You can just see that and I'll show you that from the air as well so you get a sense of scale. The original name of Zibal Chow Town was Chihi Tan Tiho. That this in some traditions is believed to something like the way of the water or the water way or something like this. Um, and so that's an interesting thing in itself. It wasn't called Zibal Chow Town, that was a later name given to it. You must remember that you know this was definitely occupied from 500 BC, although there is dating of 2000 BC. And it was occupied all the way up to the time of the Spanish. And one of the major things it traded was salt. Now that's linked with a site called Acambo, which is up on the coast, just uh, east of Progreso, which we had a quick look at. We're gonna go and have a thorough investigation of that site because I've heard there's megalithic stones there. But really, this was one of the most important sites and one of the earliest in all the Yucatan. Here we have one of the main kind of pyramids in the main plaza. You can see the shaping on this is quite interesting actually. It's kind of almost like chunky kind of mega steps on the outer part of the kind of pyramid. It's got even got a few columns on there, circular rounded columns. And then we have the smaller steps up here. And I think you can actually go up this. So I will do that so we can get a nice view from up there quite wide actually and, and then down there you have the uh, other end of the sack bay you have the temple of the seven dolls which we're going to spend a bit of time at but this is interesting so this is um this is called structure 36 and it's partly uncovered pyramid uh, and it's made up of four square stepped platforms it's got a height of about 30 feet and a stairs to the south and towards the main square here. And this is probably where ceremonies took place on the pyramid and it probably had structures on top, which are no longer there, unfortunately. But they think it dates around 900 to 1000 AD. But there were broken stele found at the bottom. Um, and these, you know, pretty much destroyed. There are obviously stele still at the site. They would have been placed probably here, either side of the steps because the stele were deliberately broken according to uh what was said here but it looks like we can actually go up here so i'm going to take a walk up
and here's the top platform here where it's thought the ceremonies may have taken place just looking over to into the main plaza you can see another pyramid over there. there's actually people on top of that one we're going to go over there and that's the direction where the cenote is as well which is possibly why this site was chosen because of the water source it has here then that's obviously the sack bay leading up to the temple of the seven dolls so on top of structure 36 here at zibble chow town now there were hundreds of structures possibly thousands just showing you a view from above and then looking out again into the main plaza you've got a spanish construction in the center there we'll have a look at that for those that are interested we have other platforms and stele all over in this direction it's a very very intense site there's a lot going on here but only certain amounts of it have been uncovered of course so we're just on structure 36 which is a pyramid so we're just walking down it now we've just been up top and we're going to head out into the main plaza have a look at some of the other constructions here plaza is pretty big actually for for the site it's actually quite a big site much bigger than uh excambo for instance or other other sites nearby in the yucatan but there's a lot going on here very little has been uncovered unfortunately uh and just down there behind me temple of the seven dolls and that's where the equinox sunrise occurs now we must remember that it's not just on the equinox we have this alignment which is pretty much east west here perfectly east west so on the vernal equinox on march 21st and september the 21st we have this kind of phenomena which i know my friend stuart mason has witnessed and we may still be around here at that time we may come and see it ourselves we have a similar thing at Chichen Itza later on in the day around four o'clock when the shadow of the steps on the pyramid of Cuckoo Klan actually forms the kind of shape of a serpent's movement movement moving through the day and the heads are at the bottom the serpent heads the plume serpent heads you know remembering and honoring the great god Cuckoo Klan or Quetzalcoatl there's also a winter solstice alignment here which is more difficult to see because some of the windows are being covered up but the shadows from the temple of the seven dolls do create this precise winter solstice alignment so you have the all the different parts of the year are being represented and uh, built in to this sacred site which potentially goes back to 2000 BC so this is the kind of colonial construction that was built in the site here uh, at a much later date obviously you can see the arch here they're probably very impressed with themselves for doing this but it's nowhere near as good as Mayan Olmec construction but this is kind of famous this is one of the sites we get this at excambo as well where there's like a spanish kind of christian construction within the site and so this is the one this is one of the most impressive ones really they've almost copied the mayan style reused the mayan blocks and created this monstrosity so this main plaza covers an area of 12,240 square meters and so it's a pretty big one really there's multiple sites parts of the site all around the edge including there was a cattle ranch here the the 50 uh, the, the the construction behind me built in the 15th century most of it was like 600 to 1000 AD but all of them point back into the center here I must remember this is north south east west aligned to align with the equinox we have monument 36 there the pyramid we have this platform here and if we can, it's going to go around the site kind of clockwise so you can get just a kind of view of it you can see it from above as well with the aerial footage and then this is another platform here we're going to look up there in a moment we've got a massive stele here which is broken and there's, there's lots of these stele around that have been pretty much destroyed broken some of them deliberately we think as well and this is much like we find kind of the Olmec world where many of the constructions there and the heads were destroyed so this is a kind of elongated platform with a doorway there there would have been constructions on top with the pyramid over there and just down this side obviously we're looking east towards the temple of the seven dolls at the end of the Sakbi, which is the sacred row and just here we have monumental megaliths on platforms which we'll look at when we start heading up towards 
the sack bay itself. We have a sacred bowl here, which could have been part of the tradition of cleansing, or it could be representative of a giant's footprint, or it could just be a bowl. Having a look in the museum really got me because, you know, the fact that we've got this kind of possible antiquity going back, you know, 2000 BC, certainly 500 BC, is really interesting to me um, because that suggests there was an earlier culture here. And I think this culture was probably linked with Aki and Izamal. And we know that the Sac Bays that linked those two sites up. And so this megalithic era kind of part of Mexico, I didn't expect to find it in the Yucatan, but some of them, some of them statues were seriously megalithic. We're gonna see more as we walk around the site. Some of the stele that were, apparently were stele, but they looked just like standing stones to me. So this is the structure with the burials of the king. Uh, we're gonna go behind this actually, see what's going on around here. I'm not sure if it's supposed to come here, but it's down here, which a whole bunch of things which have interest me, which is the stele, the megalithic stele. So actually look, if we look on the base of this structure, there's actually very big blocks. So there is megalithic aspects here. That's Dibble Chowton. And we're seeing that here. That's very, I mean, if this is being reconstructed, obviously, but we are seeing elements of megaliths here in the base. There's another one there, very large block. So reconstructed, but very interesting. Now we're going to head behind here, sort of heading east slightly. There's a whole bunch of these stele. Now this, this is what, to me, this is one of the most important parts, aspects of this site. The fact is you've got like basically megaliths and these probably would have had carvings on, but were they here before? Were they here before the main site? We've got a broken one just in front of us here. But look, that one there's even got a hole in it. And that's like, that's like orientated north-south. But we'll go and look at the one furthest away, the one up here. There could be more behind it. Let's see what we see. We've got a huge stone here. On the ground. This is one stone. Look at this. So this could be part of the bedrock, mind you, but it looks like it's like a fallen stella, a very big one. But here we have the actual stella itself. There's a whole bunch of these. So were these memorials to the great leaders of this site? Were they megaliths here that were reconstructed by the Maya? Were they calendrical? Did they have carvings on them? We just don't know. I mean, these ones are so rough hewn, so damaged. There's a, there is one suggestion they actually had stucco on them and then they were sort of shaped, carved like that with a sort of painted almost, but we just don't know. Look at this. So we're just behind the Stella here, which these are aligned north, south. If we just walk to these other two, and these all have steps up to them. So these were this is all behind the kind of east side of the main plaza. There are more of these around, which we'll have a look at all of them. This one's interesting, look. It's got a hole in it. This looks like a standing stone that you might find in France or England. So there we are, we're at the middle stele. And there's one further behind it, uh, towards the south. Then towards the north, we have the final one here. And that lines up with the other two in like a north-south alignment. In fact, if these are in the original position, the middle one over there is slightly off, just to one side. It could be so you align through the hole in the actual kind of stone, so it works as like an astronomical kind of sight, line of sight through the stone itself. You can actually see here, 
of the construction, the raised area of the white road or the sack bay, which leads into the main plaza here. So we're just heading west through the edge of the plaza and yeah, massive Stella just dropped, falling over here in the undergrowth, probably eight, 10 feet long, a couple of feet wide. So this is actually substructure 38. This is one of the oldest parts of the site and I'm fascinated by these because this is like what we see at the Temple of the Seven Dolls and it's the underneath. They actually found stuff on top of it. It was removed and this was revealed, suggesting this is much older. I think this could be really old. This could be like 500 BC or even to the very early pre-classic dates. I'm just around the side of the substructure here. You can see this earlier kind of construction here and look if you look carefully this is megalithic so this is the lowest point of this so-called substructure and we've got gigantic stones here now these aren't small these are like a ton of piece and actually go look you can actually see there's like ways in down there suggesting that there was a much earlier possibly you know 2000 bc structure here beneath structure 38 Amazing, and look, massive stones here as well, all the way down there. I want to get down there and have another look at this because this is really interesting. And actually, probably at the base of the structure itself, we have a similar thing, but you can't get around there. See, all down here, we have these sort of rough hewn megalithic blocks. It's like a channel, but actually, this was probably ground level down there at the time. Absolutely amazing. So, we're finding secret parts of the site that have megalithic aspects, which is very, very interesting to me. We'll just go around here a little bit. Probably see some more. Wearing shorts was not the best idea I ever had here. But again, look, you can see these here, all around the base. Gigantic, pretty big, actually, some of these megalithic blocks. So we're just walking further behind, heading back east behind substructure 38 and you can see some giant blocks just lying around sort of stele sized blocks and there's these structures back here which kind of off the beaten path which seem to be megalithic maybe older kind of i mean you must remember if that if you see how deep that went in the ground maybe there's more this is just the back of the pyramid and you see there's quite a good view of that. You see there's people on top, so you get a sense of scale. So we're just coming around the back side now. We're gonna go back around the front, so we wanna have a look at the steps going up this side as well. This is the west side. And you've got sort of curved corners on it, just here. So yeah, it's good to see that from many different angles. So just behind this platform is substructure 38. And look, even this has got very neatly cut stones. Now these aren't really megalithic or anything. But this top platform has a different sort of quality of stonework, which is probably later, probably post-classic. But, you know, it's worth noting the differences as we explore these sites. And we have these things as well, these kind of bowls, look like the kind of giant footprints. If you were in England, you'd say that was stone of the giants. Another one there. And you can just see the neat and tidy, almost Inca-style masonry just behind, just in front of rather, structure 38. We've seen a few pretty big blocks at the far edge of the substructure here. This is interesting. So yeah, the more we look, the deeper you go in the ground as well, obviously, the deep, the older it is, the bigger the stones are. Yeah, the evidence kind of presents itself the more you look. I think if we go around this side, we're gonna see a whole lot more. Let's have a little look before we head out. Let's actually head up this structure on the right here from the back, because you can go up there, then we'll go back into the main plaza. But yeah, it's good to see this one. This one is really, really interesting to me because it's one of the older, more megalithic constructions. I'm just gonna keep filming so you get a sense of kind of a completion of the site. We have two more of these. Yeah, we're heading around the other side, the back of, same structure again. I get out, oh, we can't really get in there. That's like completely overgrown. Yeah, you can't really get in there, but there are some chunky old blocks there. 
This is the structure we want to walk up now. Let's go up these steps, see if we can get out from behind. Fairly good view of the plaza here. Very big plaza. We've got a group of kids that just turned up. So it might get a bit noisy. It's good to see there's actual people visiting this site now. So this is the one we just climbed down from and we have structure 38, one of the oldest parts of the site behind it. Now this looks like the most westerly construction. We're gonna check this one out. There's, we know that the cenote is just near here as well. We have an unusual kind of smaller stele there, but that's been shaped. So there's certainly a stele. Now there's not much left of it. It's quite a small one compared to some of the others. So behind me is a uh, Zenote Zlaka. Now this goes back to the time when they were constructing the site. It's 44 meters deep <laughs> at its lowest point. It's a freshwater source and they found multiple artifacts, vases, ceramics, even human bones in here as well. So this was a sacred water source of the Maya and offerings were placed in it, probably to the water god or goddess. Um, and you can't go in it now, obviously, but you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot here at Zibel Chow Town. Lovely view of the cenote with the uh, pyramid structure behind it. Now around the edge of the cenote, I'm getting really intrigued by these massive blocks. Are these like part of the natural bedrock or have they been actually constructed to like keep the everything in place here? But behind here, just next to the other side of the cenote, let's take a look. This is structure 44. Now the mat, that is the pretty much the main structure here and that's 425 feet or 129 meters in length. Um, on the south side of the plaza. Uh, it's only about 15 feet, 20 feet tall. Two parallel hallways that run the length of the entire platform. There are 35 entrances along it. And it's very similar to uh, a structure we find at Edsna, which is, you know, it's, that's called Nohogna. Now that is interesting. So we've got connection with sites down in, in Campeche or Campeche, down on the... Um, uh, sort of western side of the Yucatan, which is a good few hours from here, south of Uxmal. We went there as part of our 2018 tour. We're hopefully going to go there on this trip as well because it's a very cool, very impressive site. It's got megalithic elements as well. Um, so the fact is that the mega long structure here, structure 44 with the columns on, is actually almost identical to one at Esna, which in it is interesting in its own right. So we're just taking a walk along one of the higher steps here. We're going to walk the whole length of it. We'll give you different angles on it. And we have a way in down there as well. Let's go and have a look at this. And you've got like a substructure there, much like, much like we find at the Temple of the Seven Dolls in structure 36, which could be an older part of the site that this was actually built upon. This is interesting, actually. So this could be one of the oldest parts of the site. Look at this. We're actually going underneath it here. Now that's been closed off, but you can see here, look at this. You can see these doorways and rooms. Now I would say this is older because the style is older. This is at least 600 AD, could be 500 BC for all we know. It's actually an information board there, but it's covered in dust. No one's going in here at the moment. Damps get in here, there's bats in here. But this to me suggests the rebuilding of this site and you can see on that middle pillar there it's actually got stucco with red kind of paint on it or pigment this is absolutely fascinating and that's behind bars so you can't go in there right now and there's the roof and then you see this this is see this is the structure here that's the roof of the structure here and then here and this is the structure itself which is underneath the giant structure which is number 44 Actually get up on the top here, like we did at the other end. We'll get right to the end first and we'll look back. So we're right, coming right to the far end, the eastern edge. You can see down there, the kind of shaping of it. Goes all the way around there. 
really does feel like the underground, like the subterranean substructure was here first and they built upon it and they've actually excavated it uh, and that's you can actually now see it so this was built on top of an earlier substructure and these earlier structures are what really interest me they've always got the megalithic foundations and they're kind of more kind of you can really feel the energy of them whereas the later structures don't have so much they're more civic administrative uh, and for the royalty of the site so we're just around the corner of the giant structure number 44 have a quick look at this because as you can kind of get below it a little bit here this is where you see the larger megalithic blocks it's all aligned it's all north south east west you've got the steps on this side going up to the top there so we're back around the eastern side of the site I'm just going to take a walk along here i want to actually get up here and have a look i'm not sure if you're allowed to but Let's do it anyway, before no one's around. Really. You can see these are like rooms, so this could have been residential, could have been civic, administrative and so forth. Obviously this is later construction. We're now heading east along the plaza towards the Temple of the Seven Dolls. We can see here a platform with stele, and there's several of these as we head down to the main temple down here. There's a few different temples up here, it's not just one. It's about half a mile or so. We're walking along this raised sack bay, this sacred white road. Many of these stretch for miles, like hundreds of miles in some cases in the Yucatan. And so there's a lot more to these sack bays and meets. So they're not just roads for transport, they're sacred pathways, astronomical, energetic, other such things. And there's enough evidence here, as we've seen, to suggest it's a megalithic site before it became the site we see today going back to a much earlier date than most people recognize so thanks for watching megalithomaniacs i appreciate it please subscribe click the bell icon become a patron if you can and we'll see you next time